Uh, 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 here's what I did not say. What's the punchline? Here's another. You're killing me. Or he'll laugh right in your face. Chai, you're rotten. B. Well, I was busy saying nothing. Carly went smartly on. Here's what we get when you sign that letter. Safe safety. See, uh, you're nowhere near king in terms of sales. No one is. We don't have to go there. But a lot of people connect you with Morgan Stern because because of the movie. And what we don't want is people wondering why why you decided not to do the sequel. Goodwill is very important, and we can't have you running around claiming betrayal. I wrote this. I think you can live with it. Here's what she put down. I'm so excited Stephen King has has come on board. Frankly, I'm exhausted as far as Mr. Morgan Stern is concerned. So I wish everyone the best. And I don't know about you, but I can't wait to read Buttercup's Baby. I looked at her a moment before I spoke. She looked like Bella uh, 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 Lugosi now. He won't do it, King. I know him a little, and there's no reason on earth he, he, he get dragged into something like this. Steve doesn't feel he's getting dragged into anything. He's generally excited. We talk every day. Well, t- uh, uh, till... Uh, 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 everything's finalized. I don't believe you. I don't know what you're after, but f- find another buyer. I stood up. His name wasn't always King, Carly said Ben. He has ancestors who, who lived in Florence City way back when. He still visits in, in the summertime. I sat back down. Does he know about me? <sighs> Bill, of, of course. And I told him just what the peace settlement says, that you're exhausted. That's easy enough to believe. My God, you... you you uh, haven't written a novel in well over a decade. She now strongly resembled Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I'll see you in court, I said, tossing some money on the table, walking out. A stupid and hollow thing to say. Uh, she could keep pressuring me with the lawsuits. No question, she had all the cards. All but one. Late the next morning, I was sitting in the airport in Bangor, Maine. I knew King basically from Misery, a screenplay I wrote from one of his best and favorite novels. I, I come up to Bangor a couple of times, just your basic research, chatting with him, a few questions I thought could be better answered in person than over the phone. Uh, 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 we had a sneak for him when, when the movie was done, and Rob Rayner, the, the director, <laughs> And I paced the lobby while I was on, hoping he'd he'll, he'd like it. it. It meant a lot to us to please him. Rob's career really took off with Stand By Me, another work by King, uh, uh, a novella called The Body. Uh, 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 we could tell as soon as we saw him walking out that he was happy about what, what we'd done with his baby. He loved Kathy Bates especially. Not alone in that, she, uh, she, she, she won the Oscar for Best Actress. It's funny, but what I remember even more was, was the moment before it started when he left us to take his seat. The look on his face was so hopeful, like a kid. Uh, uh. I commented on that <sighs> to Rob, who said, I think he's as vulnerable now as when he started, which is how he's managed to stay Stephen King. I don't think everyone realizes what a phenomenon he is. It's not just the hundreds of millions of books sold. It's that he has arguably been the hottest writer in the world for so long. Carrie came out in 74, a quarter century sitting closest to the fire. I saw him through through the window now. Jeans, lumberjack shirt, shambling walk. Uh, uh, uh. King's a lot bigger than you think. And, remark- uh, and remarkably unpretentious. <sighs> we sat in a private corner of the waiting room. I hadn't eaten since the legendary lunch the day before when... Well, with uh, with uh, the fiend of Florin, and I've been up half the night getting everything all set, just how to say it rationally, novelist to novelist, storyteller to storyteller, and the way it went in my head, I wasn't even halfway through before I said, <coughs> Bill. Uh, 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 that, that B lied to me. She said you didn't want to do it. I only said I I get involved because she talked to a bunch of relatives I still have back there, and they put pressure on me, but I felt dragged into the uh, damn thing from the beginning. The silence went on. King looked at me, waiting. I knew I was making him nervous just sitting there, but I couldn't figure how to start. All I knew was I didn't want to embarrass him, or worse, humiliate myself. Finally, he asked, How's Kathy? I liked her in Titanic. Uh, he's giving you a way to start, I told myself. So I'll talk about Kathy Bates. You've got a great Kathy Bates story. Tell him. 
I don't see her much, but did I ever tell you how she got the misery part? It's a great story. <sighs> King shook his head. <laughs> I wrote the part for her. I've seen her on stage for years. She's one of the great actresses, but she... she, she, she uh, uh, uh. She'd never gotten her break in films. And before I started, I was talking with Rob and I said, I'm going to write Annie Wilkes for Kathy Bates. And Rob said, oh, good. She's great. We'll use her. Then what? King asked. That was it. The most sought after female role that year. And it went to this unknown. I love being part of that. Changing a life. Great story. All right. King said, trying to sound enthusiastic. But I knew his heart wasn't in, in it. No, I said way too loud but I was not in the best of shape as readers of these pages would, would, will have sensed. No, I repeated more conversationally. That's not the story. Here's the great story. King waited. Okay, so uh, Rob calls her in. Just Kathy and Rob in the room, and she has never come close to a lead in a movie, and Rob just lets it fly. Uh, 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 you've got the part. Kathy sits there for a moment before she says this. The part. I've got it. Rob nods, repeats the news. You've got it. Now, there's another pause before Kathy comes out with this. The Annie part. Annie Wilkes. That part? Rob nods again. Annie Wilkes. The lead. Now, a little faster from Kathy. Uh, and I've got it, and it's all set and everything. All set from Rob. Now, she leans forward a little. Let me just get this straight. I am playing Annie Wilkes, the lead in Misery? Yep, says Rainer. And Kathy goes on. It's done in everything, I mean. I mean, I am definitely playing Annie... Uh, and that's <laughs> said and done and everything no mistakes or anything and Rob says it is so set you wouldn't believe it and then there is a moment of silence in the room and then she says this can I tell my mother King just loved it I do too it's one of my all time favorite sweet Hollywood stories he laughed and smiled and looked at me questioningly and I raised my right hand and said all true word of honor, and I could feel myself at last relaxing. I knew I could do it now, talk to him, convince him not to do the sequel, because after all, I had done The Princess Bride, and even on this earth, fair was occasionally fair, and he said, I really like the movie. I said, I did too, not just Kathy, but how about uh, Jimmy Can? Then he said, I meant The Princess Bride. Thanks, so do I. And I was about to go on when I realized something, something just awful. He hadn't mentioned the novel, just the movie. But, my God, he had to like it. I was just being paranoid. I wish I felt the same about the novel, he said, and I could see it pain him to say it. The most popular storyteller of the century tells you that you suck as a storyteller. I would like to report... I handled the whole thing with maturity. But, alas, what I said, like a total jerk, was, yeah, well, a lot of people like to just fine, thank you very much. Suddenly, he was leaning in toward me. Bill, the way you caught his style was fine, but the fact is, I don't like a, a lot of what you did with the abridgments. For example, Chapter 4, you cut out 70 pages on Buttercup's training. How could you do that? There was wonderful stuff in there. You must have seen the... <sighs> Royalty School. It's, it's one of the great buildings left in all of Europe. Buttercup's curriculum is amazing. How could you leave it out? I was mostly interested in the story, you know, the plot. And that's when I broke it to him. I never went there, to Florin. What was so important about going? What was so important? You flew up here just to check out things for screenplay adaptation. I didn't say anything then because I could feel this terrible wind coming and I knew it would blow me away. That's what I want. That's why I want to do Buttercup's Baby, he said. Get things right this time. I was dead in the water. I stood, thanked him for his time, started out devastated. I'm really sorry, he said. I made a smile. Not the easiest thing for me to pull off at that moment, but I like King, didn't want him of all people to see me fall apart. He called after me. Bill, wait, I just had an idea. Listen, uh, uh, I'll do the abridgment and, and you can do the screenplay. I'll make that a deal breaker in my contract. King was trying to be helpful, I understood that, but right there in the airport, I told him... Uh, <laughs> about my dad reading to me and Jason not liking it and me realizing how I had only been been read the good parts and now Jason was me and he had this kid, Willie, this wonderful child named after me and Willie wanted me to read it to him and none of this, this abridgment business would have happened if I hadn't started it and what would he do if he ever lost it? His power, storytelling, 
<clears throat> As I lost mine, and how would he like to spend the rest of his life writing perfect parts for perfectly horrible people who happen to be movie stars this week with all that power? And I was what I most didn't want to ever be, humiliated, so I left him there, forcing myself not to run out the door, gone. <clears throat> the plane back to New York left in three hours, and I grabbed a cab, hid in Bangor till it was time, cab back to the airport. Late. Weather problems. I sat on a bench in the airport, leaned back, closed my eyes until King asked, You had to come all the way to Maine to have a nervous breakdown? He was sitting alongside me. You did make one good point, and I thought a lot about it. None of this abridgment business would have happened except your dad kept skipping stuff. So in a way, you're very much right. It is your baby. You began it. Pause. Then he said it. Try the final chapter. He could tell from my expression that I didn't quite understand what he meant. I guess I was like Kathy talking to Rob. Look, this is the 25th anniversary year of the Princess Bride, right? Your version. It was. Well, probably... Uh, uh, <clears throat> your publisher will want to do something. Maybe reprint it in hardcover. I nodded. We'd already talked about that. Well, a bridge of the first cha chapter of <clears throat> Buttercup's Baby. Include it if you want. <sighs> you probably ought to write an introduction to, to the chapter explaining why you're not doing the whole book. I'll call the Shogs, tell them my decision. They won't like it, but, but they'll go along. They've been wanting to be in business with me for years. Florinese rights of my stuff are coming due in the next couple of years. For a moment, Ben, he hesitated, and I wondered if he was changing his mind. I just waited, hoping not. Next, he shook his head, and there was a look on his face that might have said, Am I nuts to do this? Then these wonderful words. Bill, I expect you to really try this time. I'll research the hell out of it, I told him, and have I ever. But what happens after I publish the chapter? Let's go one step at a time, he answered. You'll write it. Uh, 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 you write it, I'll read it, Morgan Stern's public will read it. Uh, I'll send a bunch of copies to all my cousins in Florin, see what they think. He stood, looked at me. I guess the most important thing is really Morgan Stern. He was a master, and, and it would be nice if we could please him, don't you think? That would be best of all, I said. God's truth. God, I said, God's truth. We shook hands, said goodbye. He started away, glanced back. You haven't read Barco's Baby yet, have you? Not yet. It's a pretty amazing story. What are you saying? That even I can't screw it up? You got that right, Stephen King said, and he smiled. <coughs> I left for Florence immediately. I didn't get to Florence immediately, of course. Florence air scheduling uh, 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 geniuses saw to that. I took the Air France night flight to Brussels, where you connect with Inter Italia, which lets you out in Gilder, and then just a sh short hop to Florence City. I made out a list of places to see. Royalty School, obviously, because King put such emphasis on it, the close of insanity. I phoned ahead and made a booking. The place is insane with visitors now. The forest where, where, where the battle of the trees took place on and on. King had given me a list of friends and scholars who he thought might prove helpful. One wonderful cousin ran the best restaurant in Florin, a blessing, because Florin, as you may know, is the root vegetable capital of Europe, good for their farmers, but rutabaga is their national dish, and you can get sick of it pretty fast unless a skillful cook is around. It was odd those first days, looking at real places that I thought were made up when I was a kid. I was worried that they might not live up to my fantasies. Some of them didn't, most of them did. <sighs> the feast quarter where Fezzik reunited with Inigo, I saw that, and the room where Inigo... Finally, finally killed Count Rugen, is on the castle tour. Uh, uh, Buttercup's farm had been kept pretty much intact, but what I can tell you, it's a farm. And of course, the fire swamp is still as deadly as ever. No one's allowed in, but I did see the spot not that far away where local scholars believe that Buttercup and Wesley held each other after she pushed him off the cliff. It's where the reunion scene took place, and let me tell you, it was strange. <laughs> Uh, me standing there, look, looking at that patch of ground. Uh, uh, you still can't get to uh, One Tree Island by boat because of the surrounding whirlpool, so I rented a helicopter, wandered. One Tree is where they went to get their strength back. It's where Buttercup and Wesley first made love, where poor uh, Waverly was born. Probably I shouldn't call her P poor Waverly. She had a great time for a while. Parents who loved her, the world's greatest fencer as her guard, the world's strongest man as her babysitter. Can't ask for a whole lot more. 
Of course, everything changed when with, with with the kidnapping, but I better shut up now before I get ahead of the story.